I'm going to quickly show how to get started with and set up the p5.js library and how to start working with it. So p5.js is the JavaScript library for processing and processing was a or is uh, a language that was designed specifically for artists and designers by Casey Reese and Ben Fry. So there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with it and we're going to explore some of those things but first let's make sure that we actually know how to uh, set it up and how to actually get it to run. So we're just going to do a very simple starting program. So you'll need to go to p5js.org depending on what you have installed or don't have installed already you may also need to get a code editor. I'm going to use atom.io and it's a very popular one promoted and recommended by lots of people. If you want to see things basically the same way I do, then you probably want to grab this one. So once you've installed Atom, or if you already have it, it should look something like this. We'll talk about Atom more in a moment. Next, let's talk about uh, setting up p5.js. So this is JavaScript. If you have the internet and a web browser, like, I don't know, 99.9% .9 of computers or your machine already can read JavaScript, but you don't have this library. Or at least you probably don't have this library unless you've already worked with this sort of code. So a library is essentially code that other people have already made, but it's not, they haven't made like the programs exactly uh, specifically for you. Instead, it's more like they've created code that adds extra tools, right? So uh, some people, when they're first starting out, think that, oh, I don't want to use a library, right? They might think of it sort of as like cheating, but it's not really. I would say it's really more like saying like, oh, well, um, I want to go and cook a soup, but I don't want to go to the store to buy potatoes or lettuce or tomatoes or whatever you want to put in there. Instead, I want to grow all those ingredients myself, which you could do, but nobody would say that going to the store to buy potatoes and lettuce and tomatoes or whatever you want to put in your soup is cheating, right? Just because someone else already grew those ingredients for you doesn't make it cheating, right? Now, maybe if you want to go and buy a can of soup and pour that into a, a pot, maybe that's cheating. But buying the ingredients isn't cheating. And this is sort of the same thing. Using these libraries gives you a new set of tools, a new set of ingredients to make more stuff with. So from the p5js.org page, we need to go to download. And it's probably easiest to just go ahead and grab this complete one. It should be really fast. Um, it's not a lot of data. I mean, it sort of is, but stuff transfers so fast now that it should download almost instantaneously. P5.js is free, but uh, you know, they appreciate donations if you're available to do so. There are some other cool things on the website too, like references, examples, other places you can learn books that you can buy, stuff like that. So you can check this out more if you'd like to later. So now what I'm going to do is on my desktop, I'm just going to make a new folder and I'm going to go ahead and call it, I guess I'll call it P5. And in here, I want to put that, that processing zip file that I just downloaded. So I'll drag it in here. Mm, it's already called p5. That's okay. <laughs> In that case, I'll go ahead and rename this. And I'll drag this p5 folder there. And that works fine. Perfect. So now I have this folder here that has this p5.js. This is the library that I will be using when creating the code. So now I'm going to go ahead and reopen Atom and we'll get started actually writing some code. So if you have Atom installed, if you've installed it, you should be able to find it. You should be able to find it in your applications folder. But the other option, which I prefer, is just to do a search, right? So if I do command space on a Mac at least, that brings up my search. And then I can, you know, type in Atom, right? And like I said, you should get this. We'll talk a little bit more about Atom later and some things that we can do that are helpful. For right now, I'm just going to go ahead and close the extra tab so that way I have just this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save as and I'm going to 
navigate to that P5 folder that I had just moved onto my desktop here. So we'll start with, we'll just make a hello.html file. So we're working with JavaScript, but we're still embedding this inside of HTML. So uh, understanding web languages a little bit will help with this, but even if you're not familiar with them, that'll be okay, I'll walk you through the steps. All right, so now that we've saved it in a location, you can see these files here, right? So it's kind of showing you what's in the folder, right? So if we look here, we can see that all the files that it's showing in that left sidebar match right here, right? And we can also click these little down arrows and you can see the other contents. That's not really important right now. Let's go ahead and get started actually writing our code. So being that it is an HTML file, we do need to put a few little things in here first. I'm going to keep it really basic. I'm going to keep it with just the absolute minimum that we need. And this isn't necessarily proper, but it'll work for now and we can talk about proper structure for an HTML page later. So I need a head tag and I'll need to be able to close that head tag. When you're writing HTML, everything that you open, you also need to close. And then beneath that, we'll have a body tag and we'll also need to close that body tag. Inside of the head tag, we need to add in a few tags to actually make this connect to that JavaScript library. So it's not hard, um, but it's easier if you just follow along and type exactly what I type. So we do script, script src, which stands for source, and then we're going to do p5.js, so this makes a connection to that library. And then since we opened a script tag, we need to close the script tag, right? And then we're going to make one more connection in here, so script src for source once again. And then we can close that tag. And this one will be p5.dom.js, and that's document object model, that's what this, that's what that stands for. And then the JS for JavaScript. So now in the body, we'll open a new script tag, and here we'll actually start writing uh, what's going to create something on our screen. So I'll open the script tag and then close the script tag, right? And then in here, we can start writing a little bit of code. So we're going to create two different functions. We're first going to do function setup. And we'll put something in there in just a minute. And then we'll do function draw. And we'll put something in there in just a moment. Basically what we do is here we define sort of the workspace, the area that something will be drawn in. And then below in this is where we actually write the code that will be drawn out, that will be rendered by the JavaScript. So to create our area to actually work in, we do create canvas, and then we need to give it some values. We need to give it uh, basically some dimensions. So we're going to put in two numbers. So let's do maybe 600 by 400. And then a semicolon at the end of the statement. We almost always end our statements with semicolons. And now we can actually put something in the draw function. Let's try adding in some text and seeing what happens. So the function to add in text is text. And then inside of the parentheses, we can give it a couple values. So we need to give it the string of what we're actually going to have it say. And then we need, once again, um, some values, some coordinates. So maybe we do 20 by 20. And at the end, we need a semicolon, as always. So now we can try actually seeing if this works. So I'm going to do Command S to save. I can go into my P5 folder, and let's try running it. There we go. It's not beautiful, but it worked. So we know now that our program is working, right? We understand that the basic file is working. We know that we've connected our 
JavaScript libraries properly. And now we can start making some more interesting and some cooler things with it.